So first of all, obviously, hi everybody, <laughs> and thank you so much to Scott and to Mar as well for inviting me here, and to Itnik for the great spaces. So uh, this presentation, I think, is going to be a bit different than what you've seen, because I'm going to tell you a bit about myself, because this subject is quite a personal subject to me, and that's how with Scott we decided that we should do a, a presentation about it, because I've been hearing a lot about this B2B, B2C, I'm sure that you do, and that's why I'm going to ask, like, is, there, uh, is everybody a marketeer or no? Marketing? marketing? Hands up, hands up, hands up, marketing, okay. If you're not in marketing, what are you in? Can I ask? Just sales. sales, okay, that's close enough. Anybody else that is not in marketing? <laughs> not in marketing? Sales. Media. Media, okay. Sales. sales, perfect, okay. So I think that this is going to make sense for salespeople as well, so, so that's quite cool. And uh, so, first of all, Let's say it is a weird title, and I know that everybody was like, wow, okay, why warning, and why is all this about? Because, I mean, we are all human, right? And I'm sure that you all know that you're a human, but we do forget when we do business, we do forget that we're dealing with humans, right? Okay, we all go into these strategies of, I don't know, things that we read, and we're like, oh, we'll do this, we'll do that. But you're dealing with a different human, right? And so it's not going to be the same as... The strategy that you read is about other personas, right? So we're going to talk a bit about how I got here and why this is such a personal subject to me and why I think that I want people to change their mindset about this, okay? So I've tried and failed at many things in my life, okay? But uh, I was living in Barcelona, I was uh, in London, sorry. I was a hipster, you know, in East London. I, I thought I was one. <laughs> And um, moving to Barcelona, obviously, you can't call yourself a hipster, I think, here, because it's just a cool life, right? You're a hippie, you're just, it's the sun, you know, you do whatever you want, you're cool, right? In uh, East London, in Brick Lane, you know, it was all about being hipster and going to these events and stuff like that. So I was in music before that, and then I was doing marketing for music, for studios, and then I got into a media group. So we're going to start with the, with the media group part, because it led me to a marketing manager role in a publishing company. It was a media group publishing luxury lifestyle magazines. And this had about 17 area focused magazines with local content. So all their areas of London had separate magazines with their local content. And they had four specialist magazines like Absolutely Mama, Absolutely Weddings, Absolutely Education. So basically it was things for, how can I say, for rich consumers, right? If you were a bit posher in London, if you could afford to go out every day, which in London is quite expensive, uh, then you'd be reading these magazines. So who was buying ad space? It was restaurants, fashion brands, bars, venues, organic food, shops, spas, and more. So anything that you can think about that can be targeted to a luxury audience. Okay? So basically, we were dealing with consumers. They were reading our magazines. But then businesses were coming to us to ask for ad space. Right? So I don't know what, what you would call that. You know? So we were doing B2B and B to C at some, some point. But from the advertiser's point, the person that, from a business that was buying ad space, they saw it as a B to C, right? Because they're trying to get to a consumer, and we are just a channel for them to get to these consumers. So what happened here is that um, I think the line between B to B and B to C start to blur a little bit, right? Okay. But it was easy because on one side it was businesses, one side was consumers, and we were in the middle. So things start getting a bit uh, different because what I did, I took on a, a bigger task for myself, and I started the digital department of this company. So this company was a bit old school, you know, printed magazines, and you know, printed magazines sadly is going down. And I mean, maybe it's good because we have digital world, we don't have to kill trees, we don't have to do paper anymore, you know, everything's on your phone, it's on your iPad, right? So what happened is that we started this digital department offering B2B services, right? B2B services to who? To the people who were already advertising for, uh, with us, okay? So we're offering them marketing campaigns, we're offering them different, different B2B services, very digital orientated, Facebook ads, you know the classics, right? Okay, anything that you can think that an agency could provide you. So uh, I've been coming to Barcelona a lot in these times that I lived in London, and um, it was my favorite holiday destination. And I don't know, I can ask, I'm sure that a lot of people are not from here, and they moved here because it's been your best destination. And you're like, yes, we're going to live in Barcelona one day. So it took me a while, 
it took a few years to, to find a good job, you know, as you know, the economy was quite bad. And so I did finally uh, get a chance and I moved to Barcelona. So after about, uh, I think it was about 1,000 miles, 1,600 kilometers, and that took about uh, 22 hours of driving in a truck. Uh, so it was, the whole house was in the back, you know, and um, it was really funny because um, we had a, a truck driver that didn't speak a word of English. So he was driving, and we were learning Romanian with him because the GPS was in Romanian, amazing, right? <laughs> and he would understand, we're like, we need to stop, you know, we need to pee, you have to show everything. It was quite funny. But uh, finally, we got to Barcelona. That was uh, us with the dog and the girlfriend in the truck. So I'm making it a bit personal so that I want you to relate to this, right? So I got this head of marketing role here at uh, Talaya which somebody from Talaya just walked in. So Johan, thank you for coming. And uh, so I got this job in an amazing uh, software as a service company focusing on uh, big data for tele telecommunication companies, right, for telcos. And uh, so what started happening here that uh, it was a great company and I was like, okay, I've been dealing with a lot of consumers, a bit of business, but it was advertisement. You know, they were, they were calling us because they wanted to advertise with us. So I was like, okay, what am I gonna do here? I mean, what would a marketer do first? I don't know, okay. So a marketeer, what would he do first? I think he would understand the product, right? The company, the business, the product, and you have to be nice to your colleagues, okay? That's rule number one, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you need to start marketing, basically, okay? To learn what you're gonna do. So I've read a lot of B2B stuff, because I was like, okay, this is software as a service. I never worked for a software as a service company. It's very techy, you know, it's computer networks. I was like, wow, okay. I knew luxury magazines, you know, it was so, so much easier. So, and I was the head of marketing. These guys, they expect a lot from me, right? And uh, it's an amazing startup. They got an amazing round from Horizon 2020, about 1.4 million euros. And Johan himself actually brought me from London. He said, mate, he said, come to the company. You're going to be the head of marketing. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, it looks cool, you know. But I, <laughs> you know, but I didn't know what I signed up for, right? But somehow I had to make it work, okay? And you don't want to look bad, you know, <laughs> you got a job in your dream city and you can't go back, right? So who we were targeting, that's what I had to find. And what do you do? You know, you do persona sessions, you find your personas, you know, you do brainstormings, you, ch you check the data that there is already a bit, you check the customers that there is already, there was about 25 to 30 customers, so you check all of them. So you start understanding some, some common ground, right? And then suddenly we found out that it was network engineers that would test the product, okay? And um, the network engineers, they would find the solution. They'd be like, okay, yeah, we like this. They would go to their CTO or to their CEO and they'd be like, look, this is the product I want to operate the network with, okay? And the CEO or the CTO would be, uh, okay, you know, I like it too. Here's the budget, get it. So the CEO or CTO is things that we all know a bit better. But I didn't know network engineers, right? I knew there was a Wi-Fi box, you know, before that. I was like, oh, wow, yeah, my Wi-Fi works, my Wi-Fi doesn't work. So suddenly going into network engineers and trying to figure out who network engineers were was one of the biggest challenges because they don't like ads, okay? They're not as social as many of the other personas that you deal with, right? They, I mean, we're all geeks, okay? But they like just networks, right? They sit in a network room and they operate this network. They're very smart people and they don't want to talk to you, right? They don't want to talk to you. So uh, it, it was very tough. And uh, so the thing that happened here is that um, I came from that background and I was just purely B2B, let's say, right? And if I looked at it from a B2B background, yeah, reading all these things, and I tried these strategies, I tried the LinkedIn ads, I tried all this, but we did it quite quick because I was like, you know what, we're not going to spend time because I don't know. And if you start spending time, three months on a campaign, and you're gonna learn something at the end of the three months, and it failed, you're gonna be like, oh shit, three months is gone. You're possibly gonna get fired, I'll tell you that. You know, your, your boss will be like, it's been three months. What are we doing? Oh, I'm still testing. No, that's not gonna work, okay? <laughs> that, that is true. You need to be quite quick, especially in the startups, you know, and tech world. It, it, every week, marketing changes, first of all, right? The tech changes. So you have to adapt to it. So what happened here that, is the classic B2B strategies or the, B2, or the B2C strategies that I knew didn't work at all, okay? And I was, I was completely lost. I was like, oh, shit, okay, what are we gonna do? So I took a different approach. I was like, I'm gonna forget about all of this, okay? And I'm gonna take a 
H2H approach. What is a H2H? It sounds like a formula, it's like a special formula. No, it's not, it's very basic. It's human to human, okay? It's, it's interaction, which you do every day, you know? You came here, I saw a couple of you, you were talking, you had a beer, you cheers, you know? That's human to human interaction. And exactly having this strategy and trying this strategy for myself, which is not even a strategy because you invent your own strategy. Because you find your human you want to talk to, I want to speak to Fabio, I'm going to get to know Fabio, I'm going to know what he likes, you know, and what he doesn't like, and how can we benefit him, how can we give him features, right? And this is how I think we did a good job, and, <laughs> and then the marketing department took over, you know, and it started to bring some leads, and sales would close them, salespeople, right? And uh, it was quite interesting. But, um, so I said about H2H, but uh, I don't want anybody here to think that H2H is something that I invented or something like that, okay? <laughs> I'm not that cool, okay? So uh, it was about 2013, 2014, if I'm not, uh, yes, about 2013, 2014, it was Brian Kramer, right? Brian K Kramer wrote a book, and he said, what did he say? Is it coming? Yes. He said, I don't care what language you speak, who your brand is, or what message you're trying to send. We all need to speak more human, okay? It makes sense, no? All right? So... With this quote that I found back in the time as well, I was like, okay, you know, I'm not going to think about these B2B, B2C guidelines. And I do recommend here, everyone, to not spend time on these things, okay? Because a lot of people, I mean, I'm not going to be giving you examples, but I've been to many, many events, you know? It was, oh, B2B, B2C. It's like, mate, you know, time's going, you know? You need to try, you need to test stuff. You don't know B2B, B2C. You've read it in a blog post because somebody had to write a blog post. You know, and it was like, ah, oh, B2B, B2B. The other one was ah, like, oh, B2C, B2C. No, actually, it's the same kind of thing. So as marketing evolves as well, you know, we really need to find one-on-one -on -one relationships, okay? Because we got so much spam, okay? We have so many channels now. I mean, on your phone, on your mobile apps, how many apps do you have for social media? You know, how many notifications do I get? Do you really read them as well? I go like that and then close it, no? That's what happens usually. So this took on a different level, and the customers wanted to be spoken on their level. So network engineers, CTOs in, in networks, in ISPs, internet service pro providers, um, MSPs. So it, it was very, very interesting because I learned a lot, and this is why it became a very personal, um, I don't know, how can I say, it was a personal challenge that I had, that I had to win this challenge. I couldn't be stuck with this. And so, what we did here is that I learned something, okay? And I'm not going to separate it as B2B or B2C, but I'm going to tell you some guidelines that you should not forget and then you could do it. So businesses, okay, you need to focus when you're talking to a business, okay? You need to focus on benefits, right? Because you're not talking to the business itself. You're talking to somebody in the business and you're like, okay, this is going to benefit your company in this way. You're going to have 20% better uh, profit, you're going to have ROI, blah, 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 you know, all, this, all these things that we say. But then you have an app, okay? We have very cool friends here that has really cool apps. And consumers, if you want to call it, other humans, I would call them, that uses them. So these consumers that we call, they like features. Why? Okay? How is it? How? What can I do with this? You know, I'm at home. How can it make my life easier? Okay? And that's about B2B, B2C. For me, this is it. Okay, so forget about all the rest, put that in your mind, and then do your own techniques with this, okay? Because that's how you're going to find your H2H message approach, okay? You're going to find your humans, and usually you'll find something similar between them, okay? They love networks, you know, they, they love little boxes, you know? You'll find that, it's interesting, they like a lot of lights going, and, you know, they love Wi-Fi, whatever. You know, everybody finds somehow their own thing, okay? So... It is true that business, businesses doesn't have emotions, you know. A lot of people were telling me, oh, yeah, but, you know, businesses. Yeah, businesses don't. But the people that are making the decisions, they do, okay. So a CEO, CTO, or whatever, even if it's, you're doing a big deal, you know, with a business, they still have emotion. These people still like something. They still go home. They still have families, you know. So this is how you have to think. You can't just think that, oh, it's a business we need to approach them very professional and this is it. No, that's not how it goes because the person who's going to make that decision 
he's going to have to relate to you somehow. You're going to have to relate to him. And this is the way that you'll win over his business, okay? So, marketing, what I start understanding, it should not be complicated at all, okay? It should be very simple. It should be very simple, and it should be very authentic, okay? And why I'm saying authentic? Because it should be for, for who you work for, okay? It should be the product you're selling, or the, the app, whatever you're doing, it should be for you, okay? So don't read all these B2B, B2C, and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna try this. No, try your own thing, okay? And so we're gonna come to that. So I think what we need to do as well is we need to focus on relationship with customers, okay, with your customers. We need to learn more about these customers, okay? So these are the basic things if you do wanna have a good H2H -H approach, okay? We need, obviously, marketing automation, sir. So there's an amazing marketing automation software here that you can talk to him at the end of it if you're looking for a cool software. I really liked it, so I'm being honest. It's not just a promo for him. And you need to get insights using social media. Even these CEOs, CTOs, they have their own personal accounts. You know, they like Tesla cars. You know, they like to go to Legoland or whatever with their kids. You, know? you can start getting some data out of social media. And don't use it just for spamming people and stuff like that, but get data out of it and try to find what they like, what do they follow, what do they retweet, you know. And this will teach you a lot about them. And then what you can do is you can speak their language, okay. This is very, very important because sometimes we're like, oh yeah, this is how I'm going to do it. No, because he doesn't understand it. When I came for network engineers, I didn't speak this language. You know, I didn't know what, as I said, we were doing NetFlow, we were doing IP fix, I don't know what, I didn't know any of these. So what we had to do is, we, I had to learn this language. So I sat down, thanks to Johan, he gave me a little, little chart, he explained me the Wi-Fi, he explained me what was behind it, why is it faster, why is it not, and I was like, oh wow, okay, now maybe I can speak to them, maybe I can do a message, you know, and they will understand it. And then suddenly our messages got better, you know, our content got better because we were speaking their language. And they were like, oh, this guy knows, you know, this company knows. So that was quite exciting because it was a, like a re revolution, you know, and it was like, wow, okay. So my question now, yeah, this is a great question, okay, and I do really want you to answer honestly, okay. When is the last time you bought a product or service as a business? Okay, can somebody, okay, nobody? When did you buy a product or a service as a business? Have a think about it for a second. Office space. Okay. As a business. Okay, that, that, that's a challenging one. I wasn't expecting the office space, okay? Because uh, it's a product or a service, though. So, I mean, yeah, office space could be, could be a service, but it's a location. It's not really, yeah, is it? Okay. Scott is challenging me, okay. Well, I was going to say never, okay. Yeah, because yeah, you never actually bought it as a business. But office space is the only time you think of it like, okay, what do I need? For the whole team. Spatially. Exactly, for the whole team. This human, that human. Right. Where is he going to sit, you know? Where is Clemens going to sit? Where is that yeah, guy going to sit? Never. Okay, well, no. <laughs> to be honest with you, when you think about it, never. Because you are not a business, okay? I mean, if somebody tells me I am a business, uh, I don't believe that you are not a business, okay? You are a person, you're a human inside a business that maybe represents a business, okay? Maybe wants to benefit the business somehow, okay? And goes buy something for the business. You try it, you buy it, okay? So, <laughs> that was quite funny though. And since we are at Inbound BCN, right, thank you, we're going to talk about why Inbound equals H2H. It's very basic. I'm not going to go very into details because, as I said, I don't want to give you a strategy and then you go try it. I really want you to create your own, you know. I want you to come back one day on my LinkedIn saying, oh, yeah, we tried this. This is cool. This didn't work. That's cool, you know. You've tried it, okay. <laughs> so I think inbound and H2H is really pain-focused, okay. So what is the pain of this person, this human in this business or this person with this App store, you know, what, what app does he want to get? What does he want to fix in his house, okay? Or what this person in this business wants to do? What does he want to benefit from? Does he want to make money? You know, does he want to save money? Or does he want a time management tool, you know? But it's, again, another human, okay? I think it should be very persona-based, okay? This is one of the things. I mean, you all heard about this. This is 
You know, this is one of the craziest things, HubSpot, inbound. Everybody keeps talking about personas, personas. You need to build your personas, which is very true. You do need to build them, even if it's, you know, it's not real personas at first, but you will slowly edit them and define them, and then suddenly you'll meet somebody at a conference, and you've done a persona, you'll be like, oh, fuck, that's him. I I've written about him. <laughs> you'll be like, oh, shit. He walks like the guy I imagined, you know, he talks like him. That's him. He's got that, you know. It's funny, this happened to us, you know, so we built this network engineers and, and so on, and we went to Mobile World Congress, you know, I, I met a guy, and he said, oh, I'm a network engineer, I was like, oh, fuck it, I know you are, <laughs> I know you are, I dreamed about you, you know, for a few months, because it was a challenge for me, so it was it's like a nightmare dream, you know, it was quite funny, and uh, when I saw that guy, I explained to him, even, he laughed, I was like, yeah, I know you don't like ads, he's like, yeah, no, I have... Ghostery, I have ad blockers, I don't like this, you know, I, like, I know that. <laughs> you know? And finding these kind of things really saves you a lot of time, okay? It will save you a lot of time and a lot of money, okay? And I think also the search is quite important. Why we say search, okay? When I say search, it's not searching for people, but it's inbound marketing optimizes your website, right? Okay, but what does it optimize it for. People are like, oh yeah, it optimizes for Google search and stuff like that. No, actually no, because that's second. Okay, secondary is Google search. First, you're optimizing for the human to like this website, to like the content, you know, to adapt to this content and to, to relate to this content. So Google comes second, trust me. I mean, in this way we worked, and, and it does work, because if you think about the human, how they're searching is better than a Google algorithm, because you know them, okay? You don't have to know the Google al algorithm, which Basically, you do a little bit, but if you know them and how they search and who they are, you can get to them much easier. And another thing, obviously, that we always talk about is user experience. And your, com your company's website, it should definitely first focus on providing a remarkable user experience, okay? And why a remarkable user experience? Because you don't want them to... Sorry, I'm just going to turn this a bit. You don't want your visitors, like a single human, you know, to be like, oh yeah, I didn't like it, I left. Single humans that come to your website, they want a complete experience, okay? They want to get to know your product. They want to know why they, it would benefit them. They want to know the pricing, if it's necessary, right? And they want to buy it, possibly. And if they buy it, it's, it's amazing for you. So if you can build that whole experience, you can just do self-service, okay? And it does sell, service, self, self-service. We did it, and we had trials, they would go into the trial themselves. It's amazing when you build something that is self-service, you don't have to worry about building it, you just have to worry about doing little tweaks, right? And obviously everybody always talks about analytics and why analytics is important because Everybody gets lost about analytics as well. There's too, mu too much data now. You know, I have, I don't know, five, six tools even at work now that gives me data all the time. And I go, oh, wow, numbers, numbers, great. But if you can't get something out of these numbers that really benefit you, you just have numbers. You just have numbers to show, oh, yeah, yeah, we have many numbers. Amazing, well done, guys. You know, you got numbers. What do you do with these numbers, okay? And what I care about these numbers, that inbound marketing actually focuses on a few numbers, okay? Not many. The website traffic, the page conversion, the social reach, okay? And this data does exist to better connect with your humans, okay? For the humans that you're targeting. So this data, you should use it for that reason, okay? And sales guiding, okay? So we've spoken a lot about marketing, about personas, and why am I speaking about sales guiding now? Because humans, they don't want to be sold to, okay? You don't, when in a street, Somebody came to you and tried something, like, oh, no, sorry, I don't have time. You know, like, oh, sorry, I can't speak to you. They're trying to sell you something. You don't like to be sold to, okay? You like, what do you like? You like when somebody finds your pain and they want to give you a solution. They want to solve this pain, okay? This is the most valuable business, okay? It's when you find your pain and you want to solve this pain, okay? And your sales process should definitely reflect this, okay? the user behavior, your sales behavior, your salesman's behavior should reflect this as well. I know a lot of salesmen, you know, they, they do their own thing. It doesn't work. But when they start thinking about the human they're interacting with, and they speak their language, and they ask about their things first, what are their pains, you know, what's going wrong with you, like, what, how can I help you? 
how can I help you? It's, it's an amazing thing. And I, as Scott said, I run Online Geniuses. And in Online Geniuses, we have one question when everybody comes in. Uh, if, if you came to the event, and uh, my partner of Online Geniuses is here, he will know himself as well. How can we support you? Okay? So we ask this question because karma, karma is a bitch. Okay? So if you support each other, I know you'll support me one day in something. So we do that with Online Geniuses. But what do you do that with customers or with potential customers? You support them with something, you fix their issue, they'll pay. They'll pay, okay? You, they won't even ask you the price and they won't, oh, that's too expensive. No, you fix a pain that they have, okay? If it was in a business, their pain, okay? You fix something and you've benefited them. If they're just a person in the street and they're not representing the business or they're not inside the business, you've given them a feature that saves time, okay? That saves their lives and they're like, oh, fuck, I'll give you money. Maybe I should not use F words with getting recorded, but it happens, all right? <laughs> and uh, so Seth Godin, everybody knows Seth Godin, and he said something, like he says a lot of things that uh, not always I like. <laughs> he just talks a lot, he's got many books, right? <laughs> but he said something that is very true. So he said, the sort of challenge you face is now clear. You must have a consistent, authentic story that is framed in the terms of worldview of the person you're telling the story to, okay? Your story must be robust and honest and transparent and you have to be prepared to live it out loud. Okay? So I hope that everybody is really understanding this. Okay? So you find this pain. Okay? You make a story about it. Okay? You frame it in the terms of this person. Okay? So they understand that's the language part. Okay? And you should definitely not be shy about this story. Okay? You should shout it out loud. And this is how content go viral and stuff like that. Okay? If you shout it out loud, people will attach to this message and they will oh yeah, these guys fixed something for me. And your business will go like that, man. It will grow. So, so at this point, ah, okay, we go back again, all right, good. So at this point, what happened? We talk about B2B, B2C, that doesn't exist, okay? It does exist because we said businesses, benefits, okay? consumers features so what happened here it's b2b plus b2c what happened obviously is equal to h2h right okay so this is basically what happened but there's no h2h okay so it's just h okay so it's just humans okay so not human to human it's just humans it, it equals a human there is h2h there but it's not coming okay. so <laughs> So some of you now are wondering, you're like, okay, this guy just talks shit and stuff like that. And maybe I'm not giving you really valuable information. But I think I did because you're going to go back, hopefully, that, that's my goal, is that you guys go back. Tomorrow is Friday, so everybody's not going to work very hard. Okay? <laughs> and it's very hot. So Monday, hopefully, you know, with the hangover of the weekend and stuff like that, you're going to be like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to forget these guidelines that I had and stuff. I'm going to get to know these guys, and I'm going to create my own strategy, okay? And I'm going to speak their language. And I do want people to do this. Why do I want that? Because, as I mentioned before, the leads that you get, they're very different than other people's leads, okay? Your hottest lead is different than his hottest lead. Very different. They're not, they don't think the same way. They're not going to interact the same way. One is a grandmother, I don't know where, and one is a network engineer geek. You cannot try the same things, guys. You know? We read these things, oh, yeah, there's a new B2B strategy. There's a new B2C strategy. No, there isn't. Okay? You should go invent a strategy, please do it, okay? and upload it up and be proud of it and, and shout it out loud. Okay? And so there is a thing that I keep saying to some people that would know me, and it's about fail. Okay? but fail quickly. What does this mean? And then, Nobody likes to fail. We don't like to be failures. Right? Do you like to fail? Not really, because then you're like, oh, shit, I'm a failure. You know? Your mama told you when you were a kid, oh, you're a failure. Oh, I didn't do you right. You know? But failure is great. When we do our marketing, it's great. Why? As mentioned before, don't fail in three months, because you'll definitely fail. If you fail in one week, you will learn something. Okay? You will, oh, did, that didn't work. What didn't work? If you get that, you're not going to do that mistake again. The second week, your messaging, your marketing strategy is already going to 
lose one failure that you did. So you're never going to make that mistake again. Okay, this is very impo important, I think. And if you do learn it quickly, you'll test things very, very quickly. And this will get you results very quickly from your test. And with this result, with this re result, you can start making decisions for the future. And in a month's time, you'll have four or five failures. Suddenly, you are much, much, not smarter, but you are smarter in your persona's relationship. So you'll get to know them suddenly. So how did I start failing? Everybody asked that. I am very, very proud of my failures, I'll be honest with you. And as I mentioned before, I tried different channels of advertising. I tried them quickly, if they were scalable, if we could get more leads, if we could, these leads would convert. I failed. If I failed, I ditched them right away. And I learned something from it. Okay? And I took that learning from me, uh, with me. I ditched the rest. And then I applied it to another channel, to, an, to another thing. And that channel started working even better. And I was like, oh, wow, it's getting better. It's getting better. You know? The company liked me more and more, okay? Because we were doing proper marketing now. You know, even if I didn't know network engineer, suddenly I was speaking their language. <coughs> so also, I've said a lot about quotes and stuff. I, I like quotes that make sense and that you can relate to. So I think he's quite famous, right? <laughs> he said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So if you found 10,000 ways that don't work, hopefully you found one way that works, right? Okay. <laughs> so, so go and do that, okay? I, I, really, I really want everybody to go and fail, okay? And then don't say, oh, this guy told me to fail, so I'm a failure. No. Go fail in one week, come back on Monday, be like, yes, that's it, I found it, you know? I'm a winner now. And, and you will all be. It'll take maybe a month, two months, three months. Maybe some, some of you are already winners, and I'm sure you are. And... Now I'm in a new company, I'm failing again. I'll be honest with you, I'm failing again. And, and I like it, it's my second week, I'm failing again, and I'm like, oh wow, okay, because now I'm dealing with real estate. I'm dealing with marketeers in real estate in America. Okay? They're not that techy. Okay? They're very, very different mentality. They're lazy. Okay? They want to be in their car, show flats, villas, sell it, make a lot of money. And that's it. So suddenly I'm failing. I still don't know, you know. First week I failed. Second week I'm kind of failing. But from the first week I already learned. I'm like, okay, these guys don't like this. Hmm, okay. You know, even over the weekend I was thinking about these guys. And I was like, okay, I put myself in their shoes, you know. I was like, okay, I got a lot of money. I'm selling big villas, you know. I got a nice Ferrari or whatever. I'm going to show this 5 to 10 million euro dollar house to someone, okay. And suddenly when you put yourself there, yeah, of course I don't want to be on the computer and this and that, you know. Tag images, because that's what we do now. I'm at recipe.ai with tag images for real estate, so with artificial intelligence and deep learning. And suddenly I'm starting to get them. It's all, only second week, and the second week is not even over. I'm starting to understand them. And if you do this quickly, you've got lower places to go, guys. You know? You're not going to fail in the long term. Fail in the short term, don't fail in the long term, okay? Because nobody likes failures, right? So everybody always uses this word, okay? I love it as well. You optimize, you optimize, you optimize. Everything has to be optimized. Optimizing what we do, optimizing the company's growth, optimizing the messaging, optimizing ourselves, okay? This is important. And why am I saying optimize right after failure? Why? Because we failed so many things, we've learned from it, suddenly we're optimizing our next campaign with the failures that we learned. And that's it. So please go, fail quickly, and when you have time, find me on LinkedIn or something, tell me about your failures, be like, oh yeah, I failed in this. And t tell me about your non-failures, your, your winning messaging, you know, your, your winner campaign, and be like, wow, Tim, yeah, that worked. Please do, because I get a lot of people, you know, they're like, when you meet people, they're like, oh, Tim, what's your best marketing tip? I'm like, well, I don't have, because I don't know your business. I don't know you. I don't know who you're talking to. I don't have any tip. Go learn. Go fail. And then come back to me and tell me about it so that I can know about it. So that's about it. So seriously, do and go do this. Fail, okay?